Hello, my name's Bob Jackson. I'm a delivery director here at Seesaw. Been with Seesaw for 15 years, but I've been working with laboratory informatic systems, LIMS, uh, for 30 odd years. Majority of that time using sample manager LIMS quite a, across a wide variety of industries. I've in, interfaced many instruments over the years using ResTech, Yukon, some of the old names from the past, instrument manager, integration manager, and that can range from simple tie trader type instruments doing simple CSV files through more complex GC files uh, to complex XML type output from instruments running large QC batch type applications with blanks, duplicates, spikes. Etc. I've worked with local labs, small labs, and also on global projects for uh, major corporation IM setups. I'd like to start off with a quick agenda of what we're going to be covering. I'm going to start off with a quick discussion of the question of why instruments don't get interfaced and then how to succeed at interfacing instruments. And then a little bit about choosing the best options within the sample manager LIMS environment. There's a couple of options we're going to consider, integration manager and some components of the LES, lab execution system. Also discuss some best practices for configuring those instrument interfaces. And at the end, as Megan mentioned, we'll have some time for questions. Um, so, first question is, why are your instruments not already interfaced? We've been able to do interfacing for instruments for 20 plus 25 years, starting with ResTex, then Yukon, Instrument Manager, Integration Manager. I'm sure everybody knows the benefits, everybody on the call. You can eliminate errors from manual entry, less higher quality. You can get your results into LIMS faster from your instruments. You can have bi-directional interfaces if the instrument supports that, where you can build run lists for your instruments and then send them to the instrument, pull the results back. So well, what are some of the obstacles? Well, perhaps you're not sure where to start. It is, after all, a complex subject. There are many options. Perhaps you don't have time. You're too busy. Too much lab work, too busy entering manual results. Perhaps you do have a few interfaces, but the team who set up the interfaces in the past no longer is in your department or have left the company. Perhaps you have um, an old instrument. It's not on a network. It's very old. Perhaps the lab has purchased the instruments recently, but due to various reasons. They're not on your network at the moment, so hard to interface. Perhaps you have no budget to do anything. So we'll first of all take a look at, so you don't know where to start. So here my suggestion is that you can consult with somebody with experience who can advise. This could be an internal resource in uh, your laboratory organization, your business, or your IT support who's done this before and can advise, or you can bring in outsiders to assist. A couple of ideas here. You could start with perhaps a high volume instrument, which does lots of samples, or perhaps has many components, so it generates a lot of results. That would be a high value win on the efficiency of the lab. Or perhaps an, the opposite alternative is to start with a really simple instrument, going for a quick win, demonstrate something simple, get some buy-in, get going as quickly as possible, generate some momentum. So again, perhaps you don't have time to create instrument interfaces. In that case, you can bring in outside assistance, either folks outside your company or again, or within your own organization who have some experience. And again, the same applies if the people who knew how it works no longer with the company, you can pull in somebody to pick up those tasks. 
So your instruments are old, not on the network. Most instruments will have an RST32 COM port type interface on them, even the very old ones. So these days you could consolidate multiple COM port RST32 type instruments into one set of virtual COM ports into a centralized PC. I believe something like the LabX from Metro does something along those lines with simpler instruments. And perhaps your instruments are new, but just not on the network. Can, we'll be chatting a little bit about return on investment a little later, and we can use that to justify connecting an instrument to the network, which may be as simple as just you know, configuring its data station to run on your network, plugging it in, or to a much more complex situation where you have to you know, install some network drops and cabling at the appropriate location. And then the case if you don't have any budget, perhaps we should dig into is that really true? Because the benefits of doing instrument interfacing are very immediate and with a little bit of work, it's usually possible to justify you know, the budget to do the work. So there are benefits mentioned. There were benefits and really the key areas are productivity, accuracy, and efficiency. You can increase how much you can do. You can do faster analysis into limbs. You can have more accurate results, eliminate those transcription errors, no transposition of digits. Looks good from the regulatory point of view. No human hands touching the results. They're all electronic records, protected, secure. And then you can just make the whole lab much more efficient, resulting in better internal and external customer satisfaction, basically making the lab look good. So return on investment is key if you're not already interfacing your instruments. There are a number of ways of doing this, which we'll look at a couple of ideas I had. Obviously, this would depend very much on your organization. So we can look at the time we could save. It's perhaps the easiest way to do it. Now, if we can work out it take so long to manually enter the results for a test, we can calculate that time, multiply it by the cost of the team member doing the work. We're a little bit harder, we can look at how much it costs to fix errors. And an error can be as simple from just modifying the result, or it could involve pulling in a supervisor to unauthorize the results, could even require going to a production system to pull back a result which was wrong, but still got sent out to uh, the business side, which could be uh, much more expensive. And then much a little bit more intangible is what is the lost opportunity cost? If you're so busy doing manual results entry, then perhaps you don't have time to do other improvements in the lab. You can you know, enhance your procedures, do other interesting work, do some research. You know, you wouldn't be able to do that if all the resources are dedicated. So first of all, we're going to look at the source material. This is an example of a GC file. It's a HP uh, type file. You can see it has many components. I think I calculated there are 59 result lines, many unknowns, and 30 possible peaks which could have a result, and 20 of those have a result in this file. So that's a lot of data. So just one of these tests could generate uh, 20 results to enter. If you're doing um, a sample every 20 minutes, which is not untypical, 20 to 30 minutes for a run on a GC, you could have two an hour if you have more than one GC. If you had 10 GCs, you can you know, quickly get a feel for how much data you could have to enter. So we can look at a couple of ways of calculating our return on investment. 